This is Ricky Venasco. I've been telling you how good he he was. He got DFA'd by the Rangers. He was a starting pitcher and then came over to the Dodgers, went to the complex, made some adjustments, and just hit the ground running with Tulsa. He has reached as high as 99 miles an hour. That slider right there you just saw is absolutely dirty. And I can tell you he is one of the most – focused human beings i've ever been around he is just a cool dude just very kind of mild tempered but so competitive and so focused i was i was just shocked that the dodgers didn't re-sign him to begin with and then when he became a free agent i was like i well dodgers daily fans know that i guaranteed he was going to sign a major league contract and he did and thank god he signed that major league contract with the dodgers Ricky Venasco, I could not look at that dirty hook right there. I could not be more impressed with this young man. Yeah, and with Ricky Venasco, following the 2023 season, he became a minor league free agent. And I think the Dodgers showcase your point about just how good of a pitcher he is and just how much he showcased during this past season because they didn't just sign him to a minor league yeah. deal. They signed him to a major league deal, meaning he's on the 40-man roster, meaning he is very easily in line with for a major league call up. And I think that showcases what he was able to do this past season. Uh, spent some time with Texas. Then he came over to the Dodgers, spent a lot of time in double A Tulsa. And during that time, double A Tulsa, he was so dominant. Uh, struck out thir about 13 and a half, a little over 13 and a half per nine. Uh, had an ERA of 1.52. You talk about his FIP and XFIP being fairly similar to that as well, being in the three to two range. Um, he is an incredible pit pitcher. He talk about the just the skill set that he has, the pitches that he has. But I think the thing that can be a difference maker for him is the mindset, knowing what he's had to battle, knowing what he's had to go through and overcome. If he can channel that onto the mound in 2024, knowing that he has a clear path to the major leagues because he's on the 40-man roster, I think you could see showcase something that is really good, really dominate, and could be a pitcher that the Dodgers utilize and will be so glad that they added him and signed him to a major league deal, added him to the 40 man roster, because I think he can just really elevate this bullpen uh, and be a pitcher to watch out for, for the Dodgers in 2024. We got Ricky in the middle of the year uh, with the trade from Texas and he showed up to us after spending about, I don't know, a couple weeks in Arizona, kind of getting everything together. And I know that Rob and Walsh and all those guys down there in Arizona did a great job with preparing him and getting him ready, taught him a slider that he'd never thrown before, um, came into Tulsa and his velo just continued to climb. His confidence continued to climb. And he was the guy when we were ahead in the eighth or ninth inning, it's like Ricky's getting the ball and he deserved it. I mean, he went out there and he just didn't give up runs in the second half of the year. And then he went to OKC and did the exact same thing. Uh, he's very similar. I mean, his fastball is second to none. It, it just – it absolutely explodes. I mean, I know it's it's four to seven. He was up to 99. Um, there's room to believe he'll probably throw a little bit harder. But it, it, his fastball plays up so much for something that's already in the mid-90s. And guys just got absolutely blown away by it. And then not to mention he's throwing a mid-80s curveball off of it. So, like, he's splitting the zone vertically unbelievably well. And then he has that intermediary option with the slider that kind of bullets to help strike acquisition and different things like that. But his fastball-curveball combo is lethal. They see that big, long, funky leg kick there. Lots of knees and elbows. A young man out of Santa Barbara, California. Now, here's the story behind Kevin Gowdy. It's very similar to Ricky Venasco. He's a guy that the Rangers just couldn't quite tap into the way that they wanted. The Dodgers got with him, and about halfway through last year, of course, they moved him to the pin. About halfway through last year, they moved him to a two-seam. So Kevin Gowdy is one of those guys. Let me back up just a little bit and go all Austin Brubaker here on some of the advanced analytics, right? And see if I can explain <laughs> them as well as you do, Austin. Okay, so a spin rate... 2300 is kind of the cutoff so if you're 2300 or above they want you throwing the four seam because they want the good carry right if you're below 2300 then you're not going to get enough good you're not going to get enough carry and and so you need your fastball to move more to stay off of barrels so kevin gowdy is one of those type pitchers 
that's always in the middle. So you know what they did with him about halfway through last year? They made him a two-seam guy, and it was absolutely dynamite for this guy. You see that pitch that, that's right in on a right-hander that has that little right turn? That's the two-seam that they gave him last year that he exclusively threw towards the end of last season. And, by the way, that two-seam is 98 miles an hour. It's approaching 100 with that funky leg kick. Kevin Gowdy, just like Ricky Venasco, there's a reason why he got to pitch in the first spring training game this year, and that's because the Dodgers really like this guy, and he carried a lot of momentum into the offseason and into 2024. Yeah, he sure did. And I don't know the exact date when they made that switch. So I was just looking it up right now. Let's just to use August 1st. That's towards the later of the season. That gives you a good month and see, a half. See, that's right there. That was, sorry, size. Austin. That was a two seam right there. Let me let me back that up. You can see that yeah, two yeah. seam right here. Right there. That pitch. Yeah, okay, sorry. No, I, I was just about to say, I'm just using a sample size. August 1st of last season through the end of the season, September 16th time uh, type of time frame. So just looking at the overall numbers, from a Kevin Gowdy. He had an ERA of 4.93 ish. The FIP and extra were a little bit lower, more in the 4.5. But in the past, in the last month and a half, and this goes back a little bit more into July too, uh, but from August 1st until September 16th, 2.41 ERA, 3.00 FIP. He was striking out 31% of hitters, walking about 13 and a half. So you see a little bit more of that performance. The results start to showcase once they made that transition towards the later half of the season. He really started to perform. And I think that's a really good explanation that you had. Spin rate, you kind of want it, you typically want to be either one or the other, either a high spin, can throw the fastball up in the zone, or a low spin, you can kind of generate a little bit of movement, get some more weaker contact. With him being a little bit in between, you have to be a little bit creative on how you want to approach that, how you want to adapt. And this former second round pick, I think still has a lot of potential in that arm and the Dodgers are starting to tap into it. Yes. I'm curious to see what he's able to do, how his development is able to continue to grow because Man, you just look at the overall numbers and you say there's nothing really there. But if you understand the context, you understand what these guys are working through. And once they made yep. that adjustment, some of the results that they are able to showcase, you start to realize, hey, he's actually a pretty good, solid pitcher that we have in this system. And then you see the depth of this minor league system and the ability for these Dodgers to work with these guys and help them overcome a lot of the struggles where a lot of other organizations might not be able to see exactly the same things that the Dodgers or try some of the same things that the Dodgers will do. And they're able to get a lot of good success out of these guys. So Kevin Gowdy is one of those guys came in from another organization, but the Dodgers are able to tap into something and this pitching lab continues to generate talent.